If you were to ask people of the 19th century, maybe not so much the later part, but the earlier part, what their thoughts on crows were, you'd likely hear most saying that they are ghastly, destructive, and just downright horrible. In fact, some people still say that today. Thankfully though, these days most people do not see them in that way anymore and actually enjoy their presence. In this video, I'm going to share 10 fun facts about those wonderful crows. Not only American crows, but just crows in general. Now, I do only have videos of American crows though, so that is what will be in the video, unfortunately. We will have to make do and use our imagination. Enjoy. Crows belong to the Corvus genus. That includes crows, ravens, rooks, and jackdaws, also known as the true crows. The genus consists of 40 species, with crows making up the majority. Their ability to adapt has allowed crows to live on every continent, with the exception of Antarctica and South America. Interestingly though, their close relatives, the jays, seem to do quite well in South America. I can understand why crows don't live in Antarctica, but it makes you wonder, why not places like Brazil or Argentina? It may be because for the most part, crows are not migratory, and it could also be there simply hasn't been a reason to move there. Have you ever noticed how nervous crows are of humans despite living closely with us? Well, it's thought that a large-scale persecution of them during the 19th century and early 20th century made them wary of people. They were quick to learn, though, that there is safety from guns in towns and cities. They also learned that there is a lot of food in cities. Crows mate for life, meaning a mated pair will typically stay together for the rest of their lives. But their family lives may also be a little more complicated than was thought. In actual fact, crows are kind of monogamous. Genetic analysis have shown that male crows only father about 80% of their family's offspring. Interestingly though, they stay with one partner for life regardless, but it seems they do have a promiscuous side to them. There is good reason behind their cheating though, it's better for the genes. So basically, what this means is that socially they are monogamous, but genetically, however, not all the time. Crows are very smart and know how to make and use tools. However, there is one particular species of crow in Caledonia that are impressively intelligent and pros at making their own tools. These birds fashion hooks at the end of a leaf and use that to fish out grub inside of trees. They even teach each other how to do it, and each crow's hook is different from one another. Individual birds also have a preference for holding a stick tool on the right or left side of their beaks. Another thing they are quite good at is solving problems, capable of solving an eight-step puzzle to get food, and they learn it rather quickly. If you don't believe me, just look them up on YouTube. There is plenty of videos showing them in action. Crows are often seen as detrimental to crops, especially corn. However, one study showed that during the seeding season in New York, only 1% of the food eaten by them during that time consisted of corn. Rather than being detrimental to crops, they are actually beneficial as another study revealed. It was found that during the nesting season, just one family of crows were seen devouring 40,000 grubs, caterpillars, armyworms, and other agricultural pests. So can you imagine the positive impact a few families of crows could have? Crows can live pretty long lives. Wild crows, for an example, have a lifespan average of 7 years or so, with many individuals reaching age 10 to 15. In fact, the oldest recorded wild American crow, according to Cornell Lab, was at least 16 years and 4 months old when it was recaptured and re-released during a banding operation in New York. Captive crows can live longer, like one crow named Tata. 
The story goes that in 1947, a thunderstorm blew the fledgling out of his nest in Long Island Cemetery. He was injured and unable to fly. But luckily, a cemetery caretaker picked the bird up and brought him to a local family with a reputation for taking care of animals. Teta lived to be 59 years old and was reported by caregivers as having beautiful energy when they were around him. It was as if he were exuding or giving off loving energy. Hmm, pretty sweet. One thing many people do not like about crows is the fact that they do eat the nestlings and eggs of songbirds. It's rough, no doubt, and I certainly don't like that side of them either. But just as predators like hawks have a role in maintaining the health and fitness of their prey, because corvids like crows have a predatory way about them, they too play a role in this. Remember, crows too, along with their young, are also preyed on. Unlike predators like hawks who only consume meat, crows on the other hand are omnivores and will eat anything, so the number of songbirds that they actually prey on are likely not as high as is sometimes exaggerated. In fact, a review of 42 studies across nine countries that looked at the impacts of corvid removal on a variety of avian groups, including game birds, passerines, and other ground nesting birds, found that in 81% of cases, corvid removal made no impact on prey abundance or productivity. They're not as bad as they are made out to be. A lot of new research came out over this year about crows, and one thing that researchers have learned is that they and other corvids know what they know and can ponder the content of their own minds. This is considered a cornerstone of self-awareness and shared by just a handful of animal species besides humans. So it was pretty remarkable find to say the least. Anyone who has watched these birds in action though would have come to the conclusion that they are highly conscious. If you would like to read further into this intriguing research, links are in the description. Crows are songbirds. I once got a comment from someone who was appalled at my acceptance and admiration of crows. Okay, well actually, I got a lot of comments like that over the years. Anyway, they went on to tell me about how crows kill songbirds and that they should be eradicated. Rather extreme and nonsensical way of thinking, but okay. I responded, which I really should not have wasted my time, but alas, that is the way it went. My mission was to get them to come around, to understand the nature of crows and how they aren't nearly as bad as they are made out to be. I also informed this person that crows, too, are songbirds. Well, that part pushed that person over the edge. They are not songbirds, the person exclaimed. In that moment, I was surprised that they didn't know that fact and they weren't about to accept it. But that is the fact. Crows and all corvids are songbirds. People often think that what determines a bird as a songbird is how beautiful their songs sound to our ears. Of course it has to be pleasing to us, or off with its head. I'm just teasing. I'm in a little bit of a playful mood right now. Halloween does that to me, even though now it's a day after. Anyway, whether a bird sings a song that sounds pleasing to our ears or not is not what determines if it's a songbird. In fact, there are songbirds who do very little or no singing at all. In short, songbirds are distinguished from other perching birds by certain anatomical characteristics, especially the more complicated vocal organ or syrinx. There is actually a lot more to this, which I should do in a separate video, but you can bet your bottom dollar that crows are definitely songbirds. In fact, their much bigger cousin, the raven, is the largest songbird. So there you go, I even threw in a little raven fact for you. I hope you enjoyed some of these facts about those rascally, interesting, big black birds that live in our neighborhoods. Which fun fact did you enjoy the most? Comment below and let me know. And as always, thanks a big bunch for watching and for all of your support. I hope you all enjoyed Halloween over the weekend. Also, a couple of years ago I made two crow shirt designs. This one, and this one. If you would like either of these, look for the links down below in the description or in the comments pinned at the top. Take care. Happy birding.